first we'll start off with what I initially set this up as. I got this dolly right here. Uh, I first started out with this collapsible dolly that I used for my old uh, solar setup. And this, this folds down and these fold out. And I just really wasn't uh, could, I really wasn't confident in how this was going to do. Uh, it did fit perfectly, but uh, because this is collapsible it, with the weight of that, it could have folded down. So what I decided to do was use a, a one piece, one solid piece dolly. This is rated at 600 pounds, a Milwaukee dolly. And I've got it strapped onto this with a couple of zip ties, and I'm going to add a couple more as well. Uh, I'm going to add a few th different things to this whole solar setup right here. Uh, but I strapped it onto that, and then I used this four, four foot tall by two foot wide piece of particle board, uh, which is a lot cheaper than plywood, uh, and it's just fine for this. This is a semi-temporary setup. Uh, I plan on maybe installing this in my, I've got a wall in my garage that would be perfect that I can drill a hole and it goes straight out to the backyard. I can run a cord to the solar panels and it would be perfect. The garage, I could run an extension cord inside or do whatever I need to do. Uh, but this is something that until I get the money and, and the time to expand this, this is going to be where this lives right now. So I didn't bother painting it or anything like that. So once I decided on this, this dolly and, and all that, uh, I put the battery on down here and I put a strap, I put a strap around this battery right here uh, with some, uh, just drilled some holes through there and fastened that to the dolly itself. That way uh, it's not going to, this battery is going to act as a little bit of a, a weight balance right there. Uh, and then uh, put on the charge controller and the inverter right here. Now, to start off explaining how I put this together, I want to start here with the bus bars because the bus bars are basically an extension of your battery terminals right here. That's, it. That's what they are. So as soon as you install bus bars, that, that replaces your battery terminals. And the reason these are important, or it, you, depending on your setup, you might need them, is because you don't want 14 things connected to your battery uh, all on top of each other right there. This bus bar allows you to uh, bring different electronics in without having to go all the way down to the battery. So you can see I've got the battery set up right here. I've got 125 amp fuse, which this is max 125, 125, 130 amps. I may even put that to 150 amps. I'm not sure. I had that one, so I put it on there. And then it goes to a power switch right here, which you can turn off the power. You can see... Uh, everything turned off there. Okay. All right, now everything's back on. Uh, so you can turn the power off. That way you can work on different components up here without having to, <laughs> you know, zap yourself or anything like that. So that's really convenient uh, right there. But it goes from the battery to this switch and then to the bus bar which again this is your new positive terminal and this is your new negative terminal it's sort of like the hub like a train station this is where everything goes before it gets routed out uh, so i did that with the positive and i also did that with the negative that goes to this bus bar right here and then you go from the bus bar uh, again the negative and positive to the inverter itself and then the charge controller uh, I've, I've got a 30 amp fuse right here. Kevin was telling me that that is not the most reliable fuse, a little breaker, uh, but uh, I will change that out in the future if that does fail on me. Uh, but that just cuts off power to this, so if I wanted to do anything with this, I can just cut off the power there. Uh, but again, the negative and positive go to that. And then I wanted to have the ability to put an AC charger right here so I put on this fuse block and this AC charger right here uh, is just a, it's an ultra power one. It's not a real expensive one, but it, it's about eight. It, it says it's 10 amps, but I get about eight or nine out of it. So with the ability to plug this in right here, uh, and this isn't plugged into the wall, but this AC outlet goes behind here and it's sort of a mess behind there, but uh, I'll clean that up later. And then it comes back through here and it goes into this AC port or, or this fuse box right here, which gives me the ability to put an AC port on there uh, for charging this 
uh, when when I need to if I've got electricity. Now, also with on this this fuse block right here, I've got these couple of lights that are under here, which are pretty cool lights I got on Amazon, but pretty cool just lights that are nice and flush with this unit right here. And I'll go over the shelf in a minute. Uh, but I put those on this fuse block as well. Uh, I've got this port right here, which is USB charging. Uh, and I'm also going to put a type C up here, which again, will go into this fuse block. I'll just bring the wires in same way I did with this. Uh, but this gives me the ability to charge laptops, charge this right here if I wanted to. Uh, and then this little battery bank right here, I can charge that. So it gives me the ability to do uh, a few different things on this unit. And it does have the fuses in here. So if anything, uh, it misbehaves, it's not going to fry the whole system. That's why I have a fuse here, a fuse here, a fuse here, just to make sure since this is going to live inside that everything is working the way it's supposed to. Now, I also, this is the battery monitor that down here, it plugs into this up port on the Renergy battery, and it's a pretty cool little monitor. It's got, right now it's telling me I'm drawing 4.1 amps, a minus over there. Uh, it'll tell you what the state of charge is. It will tell you up here on top that at the, the current, let's see, I'm 86.7 full. It, while, if I'm drawing 4.1 amps, I can basically do that for 21 hours before this drains. So uh, hopefully that goes down. Hopefully the sun comes out and I start charging this up a little bit. Uh, but this is a pretty cool unit right here. Renergy also has a, another battery monitor. You can, put, uh, you can put in a shunt here and then it'll give you a lot of information on your phone. Uh, this, I do have this BT-1 which is hooked up right here on this charge controller, uh, which gives you some information on what's going on with the battery. Uh, right now it's only charging at 0.19 amps. Like I said, the sun must be uh, not be doing its job out there, it must be cloudy or something, but it tells you how much is coming into your system. Now, this battery, estimated battery charge, state of charge, 100%, this is completely unreliable and wrong 99.9% .9 of the time, uh, so don't even, uh, you know, pay attention to that. But it's also got, in here, it's got your history where you can look at some stats and see uh, amp hours per day. It will give you a chart. Uh, I've only had this hooked up for a couple days, so there's not a lot of information. Uh, but uh, it, just some... Some useful stuff to let you know how much you're using, how much you're pulling in uh, on average, and it'll help you get some calculations if need be. So a pretty decent little amp, and this comes with the charge controller itself. So once I got all of these hooked up, I've got the fuse block right here so I can put in AC appliances. I've still got one, uh, two, three different, different places that I could put uh, another, you know, like I said, the Type-C USB charger that I want to put on here. Uh, down here, I've got the solar that is hooked up. And this basically goes into the the, PT, the solar in right here. and goes around the back and then plugs into solar. This is nice because these Anderson power poles are uh, really easy to disconnect and reconnect. It uh, just makes it really simple to plug in the solar or unplug the solar when I need to. And same thing with the AC. These are Anderson power poles. Uh, so this one right here was a cigarette lighter output, but when I first uh, when I first installed this, I had it on that small dolly and it fit perfectly. But as you can see, this pole goes right behind there. So the outlets, I didn't want them uh, getting jammed up on the metal. So I went ahead and took this out. I'm not sure what I'd use a cigarette lighter port for anyway. Uh, this is rated at 120 watts, uh, not not very much. So if I need one, I'll put another one up here uh, if I need one in the future. So that's basically this setup right here. You've got the battery connected to the bus bars. Uh, the bus bars become your, your battery terminals, basically. And then you plug everything into this. So you've got your uh, your charge invert or your charge your inverter connected to the battery. You've got your charge controller connected to the battery 
and then you've got your fuse block connected to the battery and everything, all of your accessories, your DC accessories will come off of this fuse block and there's a bunch of different types. Now, after I have put all this together, I decided to put a shelf on here and I'll try to show you this shelf. I'll turn off Red Dawn here and then show you this up here. But with this, this shelf, I'm not quite done with this yet. But what I did was made this a little bit thicker because I wanted to put these lights in here, uh, underneath here. But also, I'm debating on, the reason I haven't finished this yet is because I'm debating on how I want to do this lid. It's a pretty cool one, just a place to put, maybe you put some cords or something in here. But it's also, you know, maybe a good place to hide some things if this looks like it's nailed on. So uh, I may put hinges on it, but I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure if I want to do that. I may just put a couple pieces of wood on the inside to make sure it's, it just stays there nice and secure. Now with this, I'm also thinking about putting some braces on because even though this is pretty sturdy right here, uh, because I've got the four bolts going through the back uh, to keep this nice and sturdy, uh, any sort of, you know, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to withstand the weight of a TV. It's going to withstand the weight of maybe a VCR if you wanted to put it up there. But anything heavier, it's going to eventually, uh, you know, it's just not that sturdy. So if I put a couple braces on the side, that would help that out. Uh, up here, I'm also going to install, like I was talking about earlier, some Type-C USB chargers and maybe one other thing. Maybe that cigarette lighter port. I I've got some room up here to... Uh, you know, make some modifications. So a uh, pretty cool little unit, pretty easy to build, to set up the shelf, uh, just a little bit of woodworking skill. You can make one of these or you can do it without the shelf. Also with this, if you wanted to, uh, and, and it's something that I thought about, but considering this is semi-temporary, I didn't want to go that route, but you can box this whole thing in and put these accessories on the outside of the box. So this the stuff in here is hidden you're not seeing all the wires the reason i set it up this way is to sort of give you a visual representation of what i've got going on here but if you closed all this off and just had the box and had the box where maybe you could open it from the side or open the top up and get to all of these things you could have just these ports and just these monitors on the outside of the box and have all the, the wires and everything else on the inside of the box. You could put this port out here so you can plug in your solar. You probably want to pull the Renergy outside the box, the, uh, the inverter or the charge controller outside of the box. That way you can see what's going on. But if you have the monitors, you don't really need that either. You'd also want to put a fan to make sure, especially if the inverter is inside the box, make sure it doesn't get too hot and all those things. But there's a lot of different things you can do. And it's it takes up, for this 1,000 watt little station right here, takes up a lot more room than a Jackery would or something like that. But the, the, the positive, I think, of all this is you have so much more customization, so much more ability to expand, ability to change things around, to fix something if it's broken. With a Jackery, once that battery goes dead or once a component inside dies, you're toast. You're at the beck and call of Jackery and their customer support or Renergy and their customer support. And we all know how that goes from time to time. So by having the ability to diagnose it yourself, I, I really think it does take up a lot more room, but I think it's uh, you know much better than having one of those Jackeries. And they're, they're great too, but uh, this I think serves a different purpose. And again, like I said, this is eventually either going to go in the barn or go in the garage. So it's going to be on a wall and maybe I do put it inside some sort of a case where I can just open it up and look at all this and it's not a bunch of wires hanging out all over the place. You close that up uh, and I'm able to charge depending on how many solar panels I've got, how many uh, watts on the inverter or, or you know the DC appliances, all of that stuff, how many batteries I have. Uh, it, it's all expandable out there and it's not, you know, something that's sitting on a dolly inside my room. The reason I like this is it's semi-portable. I don't know about how portable, but I could move this to the living room if I need to. I can move this up the stairs. I can lay this on the back, on its back if I wanted to, because these the, the good thing about these LifePO4 batteries is it doesn't matter 
uh, like the old school batteries, whether they're on their side or not. You can put them however you want. So at any rate, that's my setup right here. Uh, if you've got any questions, any comments, anything like that, let me know. As I do a little bit more customization on this, uh, I'm going to do some more videos. Once I put this in the garage or once I add more solar panels outside, uh, I, I will do videos on that. But if you have any questions about this, I know it wasn't the most detailed uh, description about what size wires you need and things like that, but I didn't want to go that route yet. I may do that in a future video. I know there's a few out there. Uh, City Prepper's got a great video about how to size your solar uh, your solar generator. But uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Uh, and until next time, take care and prepare. We'll talk to you all later.